minutes out. So, well, they're in the manning yard. Let's get to them. Uh, not all of them are here yet, but we'll do our best to uh, pick the ones out that are. Jeune Baby Jeune, the uh, tote favourite at uh, this stage on course. It's 3.50 out to 4.20 and is just pipped for on course favouritism by Revelling Glory, who has opened up four dollars, hasn't moved. OK, uh, Carthy Road not in uh, the yard as yet, it seems. So we'll start with number two, Sep Rouge. Uh, local fellow, seven-year-old, who's um, 17 to 21 on track. Look, he's won five from 37. Jane Matheson's done a good job with his horse since uh, taking over with him. His form, this preparation, is a little hit and miss. His Ararat run two starts ago when well, he covered some ground and was beaten a long way. Muldura in a showcase 68 was just a middling sort of effort last time, but... I think back at home he could be one that uh, puts his best foot forward and I don't think he's the worst here at uh, $21, Sep Rouge. OK, Revel and Glory not quite in yet, so we'll skip him and get to number four, Jeune Baby Jeune, who looks a key chance, sharing favouritism on track at 4.20 now. And uh, he is, as the name would suggest, by the former Melbourne Cup winner and he's with Aaron Purcell down at Warrnambool. He's had a, a lengthy sort of preparation. He did have a little bit of a break uh, between uh, runs going back uh, prior to the Hamilton win three starts ago. Beaten in a casted on high weight last time. He ran well, ran on well there. And uh, he looks to have found a, a good race for him. A similar race, I think, to uh, some of those he's been contesting of late. Uh, he looks uh, one of the main chances for sure. 3.50 to 4.20 for Jeune Baby Jeune. Our five hell of a storm. We spoke to Terry and Carino Sullivan, who made a mental note to go and tell the stewards that this horse was going to be ridden further back today. He did that. And the stewards have told uh, others now that this horse, who has been leading up at uh, his latest few starts, will be ridden off the speed today. He's drawn wide. Tom Sadler takes the ride. He led them up and weakened to be uh, beaten about 11 lengths by um, the Knights Hot at, in the Caston and Cup last time. Well, this is easier than that race and uh, a different uh, method of uh, riding today. Could uh, switch him on. His two runs prior to that were not too bad at all. Finished in the placings at Ararat, Mount Gambier. Now, he's $8 out to 9 on course. Uh, strategic Impact, I thought, is a horse that could uh, be an improver here. 10 out to 14. This horse got into uh, a 78 in town last time, 2,400. Uh, for one thing, I fancy was a little outclassed there. Got beaten 15, but look to his run prior to that, a rating 68 at Cranbourne. That's a similar sort of uh, race to this, a more suitable race here than last start. And uh, Karen Downey, the four kilo claimer, will still get him right down here to 54. And I thought he uh, certainly wasn't the worst here at double figures, number six. Seven seeing, Coos last start maiden winner. Who won a high weight maiden at Bensdale, had every chance and didn't win by a big margin. Uh, carried the 66 and a half there in the high weight. Throwing way mouth aboard. Jamie Mott uh, goes on here. Look, he, he's shaping, or she is shaping quite uh, reasonably well at the moment. Uh, obviously, this should be harder. And uh, not only going up in uh, class which she has to do, but uh, she's also going out in uh, trip and uh, that uh, shouldn't be harmful for her. She looks uh, lightly raced and capable of uh, running a good race. She's five out to seven on track. Number eight, uh, Muse Market, uh, trained by Greg Baker over at Horsham. And uh, this fella has a little bit of symmetry, I guess. He's had six runs this uh, preparation. He's gone 096, 096. Uh, so uh, not the placings there, but his latest two haven't been too bad. Uh, over the 19, the 2200, the latest couple. It's only been beaten a few lengths in those, two and a half lengths uh, Geelong two starts ago, even though they only beat a couple home. Certainly not the worst in, uh, yeah, I think, a winnable race for him. Holly McKechnie's uh, on board, this fellow. Number nine, Gratua, 17 to 21. He's a horse in form now. One at Warwick Nobile three starts ago. That was a 58. Uh, but Christine Pools has been riding him uh, in the two runs since and uh, during that win at Warwick Nobile. And he's gone well again at Kilmore and Evoker at um, Anzac Day. And there's been a little bit of a break between runs, uh, about six or seven weeks since uh, Anzac Day. But uh, he was uh, holding pretty good form prior to that. And if uh, he can 
hold it together. He's not the worst here. 17 to 21 looks, um, you know, relatively generous. 10 Kulaks, 13 out to 21. This fellow's a four-year-old by Southern Image, trained by uh, Matt Williams, uh, unplaced from six starts this preparation. Was taken to Muldura over the uh, the cup weekend, uh, settled handy to the front and wasn't able to finish it off. Uh, Jackie Berryman, uh, she of the 20-plus uh, percent strike rate is on board and taking a couple of kilos off. 11, Turn Him Loose is a local who is third up, showed significant improvement at Muldura, finished midfield there, only beaten a couple of lengths. Finished in uh, well in front of Kulax there, and uh, they started uh, poles apart in terms of the betting. Kulax was 550, this one 31, and today they're uh, similar sort of price. Look on the home track, he's won here. Uh, he's perhaps could bob up and run a good race here. He's also placed at the trip here. 12 0 Sasha is one relatively in the market, opened uh, well short odds, and has drifted out into double figures, five out to 11. But the the Patrick Payne first starter. Uh, uh, earlier on, uh, Space Age Eagle was even more uh, uh, of a drifter than this filly and uh, ran a good race. Look, she's unplaced from three starts this prep. Um, she's going to probably give a start, but uh, she just looks as though she's capable of perhaps going on with things at some stage. But beaten seven links in a 58 last time, she's getting out to a trip where she should be offering something. And 13, Destiny Danzing is the other one. Gets the blinkers again and three runs this prep. Uh, been over uh, Mount Gambia. Had one at Muldura, one at Murray Bridge. Is getting well back. And uh, even though drawn the inside here, it seems wasted on him. He's a get-backer and probably not doing enough. He got beaten 16 lengths last time. 31 out to 51 and he does look a genuine roughy. Now we'll recap on a couple of others. We missed the Toppy Carthy Road, so if we can find him in the yard, he's eight out to 16 uh, on course, and he's had uh, four runs. He's gone um, 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, so some improvement there, but uh, whether he's going to improve enough here. I'll tell you, he did win fifth up last preparation, and here he is fifth up, and he's been closing the margins as well as finishing a little bit closer. He's uh, climbing away from the 60 kilos. There he is there uh, out on the track already in the, with the red and white sash. Eight out to 17 he got turned back in now to 15. Not the worst for your multiples, Carthy Road. And the other one is the three, Revel in Glory, who opened $4 and has drifted out to $4.60. We'll see this one in the um, those box all colours, the red and white colours for Darren Weir. And this one, last up, maiden winner on Ballarat. It was a heavy track. He got the nice trail up there. He always looked as though he was going to get there. He did the job as he um, he should have. Uh, now, he was a late scratching. He was in a... I think he was well back to Muldura there on Cup Day. He had to come out late. But he, uh, he, he did the job at Ballarat pretty well. Now, he's uh, out to $5 for Revel in Glory now. $4 on track, Jern Baby Journey's favourite. Revel and Glory's gone for a bath out to 7.50. Hell of a storm out to 9. Sanku's been 7 into 5.50. Kulak's number 10's been 21 into 17. Light blinks, and we're almost ready. Dr. Lewin's formula, the fourth of the afternoon from Swan Hill. We've got to almost 12 degrees. Expected top here of 15. Crowd building. They're off. And uh, jumping out OK, Destiny Danzig down on the inside. Strategic impact goes out nicely. Jern Baby Jern's handy in the middle. So is Sepp Bridge, and there followed wider out to Osasha and also Sayanku. Then Hell of a Storm looking to slot in. He's beyond centre field. Gratcher kicks up to keep him wide, and so does Musy Market. Then Carthy Road, who gets back, so does Turn Him Loose Kulax. And Revel in Glory, just with his mouth open for a few strides there, as last as they head into the back. Front runner is Sepp Bridge. Went to the lead by over a length on Sayanku, moving to second around strategic impact. And fourth a length away is the race favourite, Jern Baby Jern in the purple and gold. They're followed by Osasha and Gratcher is deeper. 
Destiny Danzig from the inside gate follows the fence and then a link to Musi Market. One away, then to Hell of a Storm, followed by Carthy Road. Turn him loose his third last. Revel in Glory is second last and Kulaks is last of all as they run the back straight. Past the 1200 in the Dr. Lewin's formula and Sep Rude's work to the lead now. Took over the lead by three quarters on strategic impact. Jern Baby Jern the insides in third place. Fourth is Sayanku and then followed by Gratcher who's wide around Osasia. Destiny Danzig on the inside on a length and a half to Hell of a Storm who covered up Musi Market. One further back to Carthy Road and three quarters to turn him loose. One to Revel in Glory and last of all was Kulaks. 800 metres to go as they leave the back and Sep Rude just held together by the local jock Harry Coffey. He leads by over a length now. Two strategic impact. Jern Baby Jerns had a beaut run in third place. Did Osayanku a neck away. Then Gratcha fifth from Destiny Danzig and Osasha and further back to Carthy Road. Hell of a storm to the outside from Musi Market and then turn him loose. They turn the home turn and they homeward bound and the front runner is Sep Rude just from strategic impact coming out to make its run Sayanku then followed wider to Gratcha and Hell of a storm and turn him loose from a long way back. Jern Baby Jern is still behind the leaders as Sayanku pounced on strategic impact then followed by Destiny Danzig getting out. Sayanku strategic impact tries to fight back. Sayanku ahead in front, a neck in front. Sayanku pulls away, wins at a length and a quarter strategic impact. Sep Rouge hung on for third from Jern Baby Jern then Kulax who made some ground from the back around Destiny Danzig. Revel in glory never came into it followed by Hell of a Storm and then Carthy Road, Osasha, Gratcher Musi Market was second last and turned him loose. I'm calling him last over the line. He loomed up at one point. Not sure what happened there, but he might have been one of the last ten. Well, I think he finished about midfield, turned him loose, and he did loom up. You're right, Rick. Uh, Sienku, the winner here, 582.10 on Super Tab. Jamie Mott's done the job here for this uh, last start maiden winner, and she has made the immediate step to higher grade. Her win was at Bairnsdale. She had every hope settling on the speed there, and she didn't win by a big margin, but she's been able to graduate to better class straight away up to the 62, and she's also risen to the 2100. She's a lightly raced mare by Galileo. And uh, that uh, that uh, stands her in good stead for uh, the future, able to win out over the trip here. And uh, she's um, she makes it uh, consecutive winners here also for Galileo, who's also the sire of Saddle the Stars. So these two 2,100-metre winners have gone to the progeny of uh, Galileo. And Sayanku 5 was uh, $5 was the opening price, got out to 7 and has finished back at $5. So did have late support Sayanku. Six strategic impact, uh, ran a, a much better race there. Just wasn't quite in for the fight very late, was giving a good... Uh, uh, a, a good struggle there down towards the 100, but uh, just um, found wanting at that uh, last little bit. And Sept Rouge, taken forward by Harry Coffey. Uh, he always uh, have to uh, give the leader a great chance here at Swan Hill. He's rated that horse well and it's finished in the placings for uh, trainer Jane Matheson. 7.62, put in number four, Jeune Baby Jeune. It's run fourth. Typically sound performance from it. A margin's a length and a quarter by a length and a quarter. Some nice symmetry there. And they've run 214.63 for the 2100, which is about a second and a half slower than Saddle the Stars ran in the previous, uh, which was also a 62. So this is the faster heat by about a second and a half. 214.63. 7624, the numbers across uh, the line here. 10 Kulax finished there in fifth. And Jamie Mott is our rider of uh, Sayanku. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the horse uh, won a high weight last time. Jamie Mott uh, is a high weight jockey himself, but not that high. Uh, he's uh, ridden this one today at 57 and a half in the uh, Golden Topaz. He'll be aboard Alpha Proxima for Leon Corstens. And uh, he's also on uh, one of Leon's in the last, Waterford Hill, who looks a promising type. But uh, right here and now, this mayor has uh, done the job well. And we'll go and have a word to, uh, to Jamie. Just walking out into the open here. Not a bad crowd at all. It's a good crowd for uh, this Friday race meeting. And uh, certainly the weather not keeping uh, any away here. It's just a little bit of a chill in the air. Just got to put a jacket on and all is good.
Uh, Jamie wearing these colours black with the gold and grey horses. It's quite a fetching set of colours, I must say. Here comes Jamie. Well done, Jamie. Just uh, getting this mare home. Uh, she's first time uh, up from the maiden winter course in 2100, but she's bred to, to get it and did so. Yeah, Karen, uh, I spoke to Karen on the way up and he said she'd make a really nice stay in, stay in mare. So uh, she ended up getting a good run. I had to sort of had to work the first 600 of the race. Uh, we were three deep, but I eventually got in and she had a nice run and when I asked her in the straight, she really lengthened. You'd be looking uh, forward to a couple of runs, uh, rides later on for Leon, uh, of course in the big race, uh, Alpha Proxima. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think he looks the one to beat, so looking forward to it. All the best. Cheers, thank you. Jamie Mott, winning jockey here after race four, and Sayanku the winner. It's four races down here at Swan Hill. We've got the Elfstrom Classic up next, but for now let's go back to Hainsey in the studio.